way! That was so easy! Oh, what the f off! <laughs> <laughs> More speed! More speed! Yeah, Jimmy gave me this uh, challenge that I need to prove him that this is not a wallowy bike. Right, Jimmy? Exactly. I want you to prove to me why I want a 200 mil solo yeah. bike. Yeah, I want you to put your money into this bike as well. So, so uh, without trying, without anything, I need to convince you through this video that you want this bike. So, when I go on the bike, if we look at the how fast the bike goes, oh, the race mode is on. <laughs> Let's take that off. So, when I go on the bike, Look how plush my bike is. Isn't that comfortable? What do you think? Looks pretty comfy. Yeah, but do you think it pedals really good? I don't know. Convince let's, me. So let's let's find out. So I'll put the uh, I'll put the EMTB mode on, and let's do this uphill. So on camera, of course, everything looks like flat, but this is a decent uphill. So if you can just walk with me, let's do that. That's so, good. but let's start from here. So it's a decent uphill. Starting from here, so 200 meters will travel back 190 front. So I'll start pedaling from here, no problem. So Bosch is giving me really, really good assistance. So it's not wallowy bike. So what is your next question then? Well, are you convinced by this? It looks pretty good to me. It yeah. isn't bobbing and wobbling all over the place. Yeah, so what do I need to do next to convince you? <laughs> Go. If I sprint this uphill, what about that? Go you need. To, you can't follow me. I'm gonna go fast. So now I'm sprinting. Two hundred mil travel. Let's put some gears. They look pretty good to me. Yeah? Yeah, but uh, what about on the flat? Well, there's a trail down there. Okay. Should we go there and Let's see, go see how it that. there? Okay, so we've got a flat section here, and you're going to tell me that this bike pedals yeah. amazingly well on the flat. So we have some roots and rocks and whatever. So. What I think mainly people think that, yeah, when it's a long travel, it's gonna go up and down a lot. So, yeah, I'll show it. Again, we have 40% sag. So I'll make a loop over there and pedal here. Seated or stand, like sprinting? Let's do both. Yeah, okay, I'll do first the seated one. So I guess that's the, that's how most people ride. Okay, I'll get a position. Go. I don't know. Faster! Okay, hey, that looked too easy. There was nothing yeah, happening. Without motor power, so now I don't have any power in the motor. Motor off. Again with speed. Let me see. Get out of the uh, saddle. No motor. No motor. Power on. Oh yeah, put the power on, but uh, there wasn't a lot of action going on from the bike there. Okay. Power on. Let's go. Take a different place. Way harder to without the power. Come back. I'm surprised. I'm very surprised. So, uh, is there anything else I can do to convince you? I want to see you in corners. I want to see does this whoop, dive through all the travel in the corners okay. and use all that 200 mils. Let's do that. What about this corner here? Here's a nice flat corner we got here. That's going to uh, challenge it's not you. Too, it's not too tight though, but we can do some tight ones over there, but this has a lot of speed. Yeah. So, I'll do this one. So, I'm gonna be coming down there 
nearly without any brakes, so let's see how it goes. Okay, you made that look pretty easy in that corner, and uh, <laughs> I think I gotta challenge you to. Uh, you're just, uh, so you're not convinced yet? Yeah, I'm not ready to hand over my wallet quite yet, but uh, <laughs> let's. Uh, Let's find let's, something. Let's you, you pick the corner. Let's, let's, let's get some nice yeah, yeah, tight yeah. corners. Some switchbacks perhaps. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Maybe. There's, uh, there's a lot of stuff there. <coughs> Whatever. I'm okay. here to prove. Okay, let's go do it. And uh, if you check out the conditions today, it's uh, it ain't exactly loam. It's a bit slippery. Yeah, we're in the autumn. Nothing is really, really grippy at the moment. Okay, but yeah, this is the, probably the grippiest we get, get yeah. so far. Let's go do it. Okay. Long travel bike and long geometry, long yeah. wheelbase, getting around a corner. So right up here we got, uh, how would you describe this corner? Well, this is not entirely built corner, so this is made by one of those machines. So I'm trying to show you how the long travel can push through that and not to lose any speed because of that corner. So I'm trying to get as wide as possible here from this double track and uh, corner there and pump from the corner more speed through that. So uh, so what do you think? Like what, what do I need to prove here? I want to see you hit this nice and yeah. fast and just pop out of, yeah. out of that corner. Okay, I'll, I'll do it. Nicely done. That looked, uh, looked pretty good. Uh, I wasn't entirely happy about that, but it's really, really hard to get into that corner. But I think I popped out. I, I give it a little kick with my feet. As whenever you exit a corner in a race, so I, I just can't help it to start pedaling immediately. If, if it's a corner where you can, where well, this is flat basically, a little downhill. Yeah. But. Uh, I want to do it one more time because it's a fun corner. So I'll take one more run on. Oh, that was good. That was that was so fast. I mean, Pretty you successful. can't really push that corner that much. You need to lean the bike a lot because there's not a lot of grip. And I'm afraid that the, if I would go like, uh, like a direct to the bank, I would slip off. So that's why I'm leaning the bike quite a lot. So that is not exactly a berm, but I, I would say that that's a challenging, challenging uh, uh, feature. On this trail, which is, moves me on to my next one is uh, popping out of the corner there. Uh, yeah, long wheelbase here. Yeah, can you manual? Manual? Why not? I mean, but yeah, give me give me your insight. Like, what would be the benefit on shorter travel bike on that? After watching you ride there, I don't see anything. Yeah, Even and to say that this corner is pretty flat. There, you don't have a whole lot of elevation to pick up a lot of speed into the No, no, well. it's like uh, you enter quite fast, but you enter to the flat. So the main point is to uh, try to maintain as much speed as possible. Even after the braking, try to generate a little bit of speed like uh, from pumping motion through the corner. But leaning the bike and pumping in the same mode, the motion is not very easy. But like you, you saw it, the, the low top tube it, it makes really easy to lean the bike. So that is the main main thing that uh, what you need to be able to do when you when you are going the corner. You need to be able to lean the bike and make room for the bike to be able to lean. Uh, so so you're making this really hard again. Yeah. So I found this a uh, really tight little corner here and really flat, and we're going to even make it tighter. Yeah. And, and uh, <laughs> what's this? It's nice and slippy as well. So, so you mean that I need to go over this hump uh, and corner that? And, yep. uh, yeah. So, well, how much speed? Flat out? Yeah. 
<laughs> Max speed, out, out of the saddle, pedals. Let's see if I land on my face, because that's really slippery. But yeah, there's kind of, maybe if I start sliding, there's a little bank here I can uh, maybe save myself. But yeah, this is totally flat. And I, I think uh, if, if we're doing it like this, well, uh, I could go inside, then it makes it even harder. So let's, uh, but let's uh, limit it a little bit. So would you say that that's the window between these? Yeah, I'll give you that. Yeah, maybe even narrow this one so it's we don't have well, we need to corner like that. So now it's like a almost ninety degrees corner. Yeah. I lost my bank though. I'm gonna uh, change those. Okay. So I'm gonna make a mark here where I need to hit. So I need to hit there. And uh, yeah, I'll be taking speed from that little bank over there. I'm ready. So, uh... <laughs> More speed? <laughs> More speed! That was Look, I was over! Way like, too easy. I have a 36 tooth and I'm at the third last. I don't know if I can have time to pedal even faster. Let's see. I'll start to pedal as hard as I can. Let's see if I can go more gears. <laughs> I was a little bit breaking there, but, but just to control, just to control. Oh yeah, that's the thing, you haven't been breaking. Oh yeah, but I, 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 would just, I didn't break earlier, but now I had to control a little bit. I had to kind of flick yeah. it around yeah. a little bit. I don't know if you can, you can see it on the video, but like... You don't see a breaking mark here though. Nope. It's a, it's a little sliding over there though, but it's, that's not from breaking. But I was just... Like when you go in the corner, and the braking... You, you don't break to slow down. You, break many times to just to have more grip and control because when you have your brakes on when you lean the bike wants to stand up more so that creates a little bit more more grip in the ground do you want to know why this uh, is this works outside of the suspension and everything do tell I mean, us yeah so uh, cornering can be like this it works with every bike there's a lot of uh, stuff that people start saying that you need to put your hands like this or your bum like that or point your knees or whatever that shit doesn't work that because that's not what you're supposed to be doing the end result looks like that but that is not what you need to do if you look at all the pro riders when they need to do a really really tight corner the easiest way to make more uh, the, the corner uh, smaller the turning rate is smaller is to lean your bike okay how do you lean your bike? That's the question. So, if I try to lean my bike uh, from straight arms and legs, that's the l leanest thing I can do. So, when you go first down and then lean, that's the end result you're gonna see when you corner. So, down and lean. That's why your hands look like this. And that's why your it looks like that. Don't drop the cranks first. The point with the cranks is that they, your feet should be always level to the ground. It looks like I'm dropping my crank, but I'm not. Even though it's doing like that. My feet are level to the ground. I'm just making room for the bike when I turn. So that is the only reason why you should do this, to make room for your bike. Don't worry about your hands and whatever. There are stuff that will make you stronger in a corner, like putting your elbow up so you can use your chest muscles but the main point is to lean your bike that's it down put the bike to the side easy as that okay that's some good advice there
as corners come, this is pretty tight. So this is the flattest corner. Like this is even worse than what you showed me before that way I had to do it. So, so I'm doubling down on it. So, so cornering this, this is 90 degrees basically. And there's a stump here that you, you need to corner. How was it? Was it fast? That was fast. Tight corners in really slippy conditions. So, let me break it down. So this is just breaking here. And then there's nothing, look. So, on this part I'm not breaking. I'm breaking here, but I'm breaking again. I'm trying to break with my front as much as possible to load it. So I can compress the bike and then turn it over there. So, front brake is really important. Because with a rear brake, you cannot really brake. It's like twice the distance if you go only with the rear brake. And front brake only is half the distance from the rear brake. And then both brakes, you can only uh, limit a little bit. Okay, it's drop time. Okay, drops. So. This is uh, something that you can roll or you can drop. And uh, let me do this slow as possible. As slow as possible going down this. So I'm going to do this as slow as possible. So here I prepare it. And look, I'm not pushing my weight back. I'm just trying to keep my weight balanced. And the bike changes the angle. I'm not pushing my weight back. So. If you look at it, we'll give you an idea how steep this is, yeah. Then let's do a drop. Okay, not a lot of speed. So gently pushing back, nothing crazy. Like you don't need to go pulling the bike into the actual manual. You just lean a little bit back so you get off that weight from the front. So let's do the second version. What I did there, I was putting my chin to the handlebar first. It was similar if you start going as slow as possible that shoot over there. So I went chin to the handlebar so I can push my front to the ground so I can land front first. So let's uh, let's uh, pull. Yeah, let's let's send it pull. big. Send it big. Oh, that was small. Woo! So, we've been riding around on some uh, nice little trails here. And what have we come across? So, that's a big drop on the trail. Barbie. Let's test that 200 mil travel because I've just spotted. We've got some rocks up here. You want to see me? Oh, uh, let's see, that? let's see. It probably looks like nothing on the camera. How do you should go up? It's it's at about okay. Okay, so you're gonna ride up it. So I'm gonna I need some speed for that. Yeah. Okay. Well, just uh. I'll check the pathway. There's no rocks, small children, or animals. Okay, I'll just hook that the flat then. Hook that the flat. Okay. Fun. It looked like nothing. There wasn't even a sound out of the bike. Yeah. Look, <laughs> I used the. This time I used all the travel in the fork. So I was here roughly on the trail. So so uh, in, in the back, of course. But then when you land, you have so much of that damping available. Yeah. Okay. So. That wasn't the point, proving that the point, a, it's a we, trail we bike. To show, we had to show that there yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, it was pretty amazing, like, you know, yeah. it was just so smooth and... Yeah, and I went up that as well, so without any issues. So, uh, is this a obstacle I, I hard enough? This is There's a little good. off camber here, just, this is not a feature on the trail, but uh, we just made a little leeway into it yeah but just to give you aspect of what it is like this is a pretty big rock so is that like of course you need to push from that so 
Well, your your uh, like your argument is that I'm gonna sink into the travel. I'm not being able. I'm not gonna able to hop on top of this. Yeah. Okay. That's my so, argument. Okay, so Don't I have a wrong. big e-bike as well, like a heavy e-bike. With a normal bike, I would like just say that that's too small, but. Really. Yeah, we got a tricky line coming into this. It yeah, isn't as easy as it looks. Just a practice one. Yeah. yeah. From here, maybe. I, don't, I just want to get rid of that moss a little bit because it's going to be slippery. slippery. All right. You good. No way! And down! <laughs> no way! It's a little bit intimidating, but yeah. That was so easy! Oh, well, f off! <laughs> <laughs> you made it look so easy! Uh, I mean, I'm not a jibbing guy. For, for most people who jib a lot, that might be easy, but yeah, now, now it's uh, doable. But still, I was worried about like hitting something there. Yeah, but when we narrow it down, this is not 100% of what we're riding. No, this no, no. Just, this, this is just a fun little section yeah. that we threw in. That, but yeah, you made it look easy. <laughs> yeah, no, of course. Every, every, every time something is hard and somebody does it, it looks, yeah, easy usually is when it succeeds. bike takes you everywhere so I mean so what's the disadvantage to have more travel on a trail like this is the question uh, like I think that we have a perfect bike here that like I mean this is the bike that all the industry wants you know you used to be you used to do all the kind of crazy shit uh, when you were uh, younger back in the day so like if I go back in the day when doing the crazy shit I had my trail bike i had my enduro bike i had my downhill bike so i was running yeah. three different bikes yeah. to do three different types of riding yeah. and like honestly after riding today with suddenly i don't need three bikes anymore yeah because this truly is one bike to do it all at the end of the day and this is like like i'm putting the marketing hat to the side here yeah, yeah. and being you know being completely but would you lose open. Any, like would you lose anything Nothing. buying this bike and not doing all the crazy shit no it, it still pedals amazingly well on the yeah. trails like these trails you see here are flat yeah. they're, they're not in crazy yeah. but then when we come to the crazy stuff yeah we still have all that in the but back to look do it. the advantage of having more travel even on this kind of stuff is that it's more comfortable True. It's true. so much more comfortable. Also, you can change it to shorter travel if you want. If I talk how it is for me, that before today, I probably would have went with a shorter travel bike based on these basic trails that I ride and not having a whole lot of time to ride. I would have went, but after riding this, carrying 15 kilo backpack, oh, yeah, rather the camera backpack equipment. Is over there. Let, let's, just, um, let's just look at it. Like, so, this is open, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But it's like, uh, this is what you're carrying. Yeah, and it's <laughs> fully loaded with a couple of cameras, lenses and drones and all. But, but my point, if we talk about my point, is that after riding this, that I've changed my mind. Yeah. The comfort level of yeah. riding, and especially being an e-bike, you're seated a lot more in a bike. I hear people saying that the steep C-tube angle is, doesn't uh, work on flat. So, uh, what's oh, your... No. <laughs> oh no! I didn't even know. No, no I oh, oh yeah, because like carrying a heavy backpack, yeah, you, yeah. you tend to like on, an, on my old bike. I that can, the front wheel will be up the whole I, time. So this is a bike that works really good for everyone. Just guaranteed, like absolutely. So at the end of the day, is this bike better than what I have at the moment? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is this bike is better what you have at the moment like let alone all the innovations we have with the CNC machining This is so easy to service 
there's so many like things that like you don't have with your bike for example the keyless there's a <laughs> you can you can open the battery compartment without the key of course you need an allen key but still it's like a you need you don't need to unthread anything it just opens like that um all kind of crazy features that you don't even uh, uh think about when you're buying a bike so yeah i'd like to talk a little bit there you mentioned about you know value for money yeah and people always associate being very high-end brand very expensive but in reality it's not like no. like you know what the customer is getting at the end of the day if we compare to some of the biggest you can get the same uh well a little bit better components actually with the same money but you get this recyclable there's like this is not carbon composite which is not recyclable at all it is made in europe fair game like all everyone who works for the company gets fair uh, treatment with paychecks and working hours and everything my point is that when you when you buy one of our products you know that it's made well and uh we we're 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 here just for people that ride bikes. We want to make bikes that we want to ride and we want to, We know that we want to ride this bike, you want to ride it as well. Um, so One cool thing you talk about with the frame is like, it's zero waste. Can anybody do that? Can anybody no, manufacture no. a frame that has zero oh, that's waste? A car. Even the surface treatment with us is zero waste. And let, uh, if, we, if we think about our landfill even there is only five percent from the from the total waste that they get like the local recycling center they only get five percent of landfill so overall i would say that this is most eco-friendly bikes that's not like that is not the obvious thing when you buy one one of these but i mean uh that's one quite important one end of the day to summarize it is there's no disadvantages there's no we're really uh like we're we're just um i think we're like uh we're fighting the status quo every time we have an idea and uh like that is the hardest part uh like having ideas is that just uh, you need to uh tell people how it works what it is why you should get it and um and that is something that it, it, like if you do something differently people are like oh they're doing that differently how uh, so uh, how do you kind of define uh, like how do you how do you make your decision to go there I, I i said it would be hard for people to see how do you do this decision for sure but like one thing at a time i would say like this is one like just believe me that this is like this is good and and the best part you can change it shorter travel that's the that's the main point and on e-bikes 160 rear is it's short travel, I would say. Yeah. Like, there's no point of having e-bike with 140. I would say it's like you use that travel instantly. You have more, more. With all that extra train. weight, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's it. That, that's and it. The sun, we got is sun. sun is shining yeah. finally as we're wrapping it up for the yeah. day. <laughs>